Hello everyone, welcome back to a Maya 2018 tutorial series. This is going to be the airplane project. Um, again, this is just going to be an update from my playlist from the 2015 airplane project. So it's the same project just done in Maya 2018, so you guys can be more acclimated to the user interface of Maya 2018. Okay, so jump in. We're going to do the same thing we do with every single one of our projects, which is create a project folder. So we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Project Window. Okay, I'm going to go to New. This one's going to be called Airplane Project. I'm going to leave the location in the same spot. Um, yes, this is not the safest location for this to be at, but it makes it very, very easy for me to get to for uh, these tutorials. So if you prefer to store it on your C drive, not on the desktop, that might be a safer location for you. But for me, for, this is where it's going to stay. So we're going to hit Accept. Okay. Next, I'm going to go to set the project so that when I save or render images, it will go into the project folder I just created rather than whatever I used last time. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Set Project. And I'm going to go to Airplane Project and Set. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we've set the project, we've created the project, we're now going to go to save this scene. So we'll do save scene as. It popped up on my second screen, bring it over here. Okay, so I can see that's in the right directory. Here's my airplane project underneath the scenes folder. I'll just go ahead and call this one uh, airplane underscore breading, that's my last name, and modeling stage. This is a uh, Something I do for my pipeline so that if I have a lot of um, changes in the project as it goes further down the animation pipeline, that I can refer back and know where this scene lands in that. So not having to just refer to the date and guess, I can say, okay, this is the modeling phase one, two, three. This is the rigging stage one, two, three. It's the animation, texturing, so forth. So, forth. so all right, so we're going to do save as, and there we go. So now we're ready to get into it. So for this, Project, we're going to again use reference images. If you are in my class, you'll find those in Moodle. Um, if you are just watching my videos because you're an online subscriber or just happen to come across my page, uh, you'll find a link for my Dropbox that will have those reference images as well inside the description below. Okay, so for everybody else, go ahead and download those images. Um, here is my airplane refs after I've downloaded it. Um, here's my airplane project folder. I'm going to open up my airplane project folder. I'm going to go down to where it says source images. And I'm going to open up my airplane reference images. I'm just going to drag and drop them all into my scene or into my source images folder. Okay, there we go. Close that. Close that. And I don't need this empty folder anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Okay, back into Maya. Okay, now we're ready to get started. So I'm going to start out by creating a plane. So we can do this one of a couple different ways. We can use our drop-in planes, or we can go to create and specify beforehand. So if I just drop in a plane, um, it pops in here. But as you can see, it has 10 by 10 polygons, um, subdivisions by default as it gets created. I can adjust this over here in the inputs, but I could also do it. Um, beforehand by just going to create polygon primitives and underneath the submenu for this you can click on this box and pop it onto my second window bring it back over for you guys to be able to see and you can see that width and height subdivisions are back at 10 by 10 I'll just bring these down to one by one you don't want a ton of geometry for, our, for reference images because you're not using them for modeling you're just using them for helping you uh, define the borders of your model. So we're going to hit apply. And there we go. That's one. I'll just leave this over here for a second. If you hit create, this will close this window down. You'll just have to go back up to this drop down to bring it back open. Um, that's the reason why this didn't close on me, if you guys are wondering. Okay. So first one, I'm going to scale this to, let's do 10 
by 10 by 10. Oops. Not by 1. Visibility off on accident. There we go. All right, I'm going to call this ref underscore top. Okay. Good so far. Now I'm going to attach my first shader to this. I'm going to hold down right mouse button. I'm going to go to assign favorite material, Lambert. And it pops open this attribute editor on the side here. And you can see on the far right, it says Lambert 2. So go ahead and click on Lambert 2, where it says color attribute. I'm going to go ahead and already attach this in here. Here's the color attribute. Checker box, let's click on that. I'll open my create render nodes. It pops up on my second screen, so I'll bring that back over too. Um, I'll go ahead and close this one over here for now. I'm going to go to my file node. That pipes that automatically into that attribute. Underneath the image name, I'm going to click on the folder. Bring that folder back over here. And I'm going to be doing my Pontoon top reference image. I'll hit open. Okay, there it is. But it's not popping up in the feed yet because I haven't turned the textures on inside the viewport. So to do that, I'm going to click on the textures icon, which is right next to the light bulb. That'll make it for now the textures are viewable in here. And since I created this with only one polygon, the UVs are perfect. It takes up all the one by one space, but it doesn't look perfect inside the image here. And it's just because it's a, a square. It's not what the shape is supposed to be. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit later on once I have all the rest of this created. So I'm going to go ahead and go to back into here and back into plane. And this time I'm going to rotate it. So panel box, start to rotate it by 90 degrees in the X. And you can see it's already kept that uh, single polygon. And it's not a 10 by 10. That's what I wanted. So that's good. I'm going to hit R for scale. I'm going to, actually, I'm not going to use the scale tool. I'm just going to go over to where the scale values are. And I'm going to again put in 10 by 10. Okay. That's good. Now I'm going to add in the next Lambert. So actually I'm going to first name this. We're going to call this ref underscore side. I probably should put in pontoon as well since we have two different sets. I'll add that to this one over here as well. Underscore pontoon. There we go. All right, so side. Go to my favorite material, Lambert. Go to the color attribute. Click on this texture node. Go to File, Folder. Bring this back over here. This one is our side. And hit Open. And same thing. This looks like it's been stretched in the Y, but we'll deal with that a little bit later as well. Okay. Next step, we're going to drop in another plane. This time, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees in the z axis okay so now it's going to be facing this way i'm going to hit r for scale and again i don't even need to do that i'm just going to go over to my scale values i'm going to hit 10 by 10 by 10. okay that's good um, i'm going to hold down a right mouse button and go to assign favorite material remember go to the color attribute Go to file, go to folder, and again, we're going to do pontoon um, front. There we go. Okay, so I can see that this one needs to be rotated. It's facing the wrong direction. I'm going to actually rotate this one 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees. So it's now facing the right direction. Now I can kind of start to fix some of this stuff that's not quite right. So I'm going to select, actually before I do that, I'm also going to make sure this is named right. So we're going to go to ref, front, pontoon, there we go. So I'm going to select 
the side and the front, I'm going to R for scale, I'm going to scale them together because I can already see that in mine that they already match on the bottom and the top. So I don't really need to adjust these uh, to fit. I just need to adjust them at the same time to look right. So I'll squash them down till they match up with what I think looks right. That's more like pontoon. I expect to see things don't look stretched as much now. Okay. That's good. Now let's deal with this top view here. I'm going to click on the top view. And again, this looks stretched. I don't have to worry about the length. Is It looks like the length. Uh, I think it just needs to be moved back slightly. That looks right. Okay, so that, that's good. I just need to scale this together. I'm going to hit R for scale. And I'm just going to, in the z-axis, scale till this looks a little more accurate to a pontoon. And I think that that looks about right. In my previous lesson, I had exact numbers here, but after doing it for a while, you can just visually see like when it looks like things are being stretched and if not. Um, so the same thing with this one, I'm gonna wanna probably scale this so that it's a little closer to that. There we go. Okay, yeah, so that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and save now. So file, save scene. We're going to go ahead and stop the lesson here. In the next lesson, we're going to break these apart and kind of get the reference layer set up and start modeling. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.